Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, Guile here and welcome back to the Forged Alliance Forever promotional series. Happy 2016 to each and every one of you. I hope you all had a fabulous Christmas and a very happy new year. I hope you all drank and ate far too much and spent time, quality time, with all of your friends and family, including that weird uncle that always manages to say something inappropriate and embarrass himself. It was all worth it. I'm pretty sure nothing dramatic is going to change this year from what we've seen before. There's probably still Russians in Ukraine, Americans are still shooting one another, and Daesh don't seem to be going anywhere. But one cause to rejoice is that that also means Supcom is here to stay. That's right, and as always here at Guilecast, we have been nothing if not generous to those bastions of mediocrity the average Joes we have done our best to showcase their work in the past and I thought we would kick off 2016 with a little homage to them with a little bit of custom 2v2 action on Fields of Isis. Alrighty, you guys are ready, I'm ready and the players are sure as hell ready. So let's go on over to the game zone and see how these guys are going to get on. 2016 baby, woohoo! Can you believe it? Doesn't it seem like the London 2012 Olympics was like two minutes ago? And now we've got another one looming on the horizon this year in Rio. I, just, well, I don't know why I'm talking about the Olympics, but it just seems crazy. Like The older you get, most of my audience I'm pretty sure is about 12. But uh, just trust me guys, when you hit about 25, 26, 27, it's like you hit an oil patch and you're just sliding towards the grave. Everything just accelerates. Anyway, enough of that. We have our teams designated by our funky new overhead view here. We've got Team 1 and Team 2 there. And it leads me to believe that rather more conveniently than last time, Team 2 and Team 1 are in their correct places. So Team 1 will be over here on the left and Team 2 with Green Team will be over here on the right let's take a look at our players for team one up here at the top left we have moses the red very conveniently going ferrari red and conveniently going cybrin already on the move with his acu after plonking down just a couple of mass extractors and a land factory they're going to get that mass asap as he heads on towards the center and his teammate down below still in the center of his core max there sky out in combat green He's going UEF, very sensible opening first land, and he seems to now be on the moves. We're going to stop off next to the Hydro and help his engineer build that. Most of the red doing very much the same. He's going to send out some labs, a couple of hunters there with a mole to try and catch any early engies that might be making their way to the center. Let's take a look at their opponents over here on the right-hand side. We have Reed in regal purple and he's going seraphim he opened first land also hoping uh, helping that ng there get the hydro and last but not least team member number two for team two it's bartimus or as we shall be referring to him bart because that's just a hell of a lot easier in lurid green and he is going aeon opening first land Gonna throw down a whole bunch of air factories around that first hydro but it doesn't seem to be stopping off with his com he's not going to help that ng he says you can do that yourself going to strut his stuff straight to the middle all acus now seem to be on their way to the center we've got one ng out there from bart looking like he's going to make a play for his mass down at the bottom remember of course you want to get these harbingers and uh, what is that is that a loyalist or a titan wreck i think that's a loyalist wreck right in the center there uh, yielded the most mass out of all of those wrecks but in come labs now a couple of mech marines from sky out as well but overstepping his bounds is going to be moses the red sending that little attack team of hunters a little too far into enemy territory it's going to get swatted down by reed's acu but moses the red looking like he's going to get first dibs on the top reclaim but most importantly for team two bartimus is going to get the pick of the cream from the bottom aperture there you can see almost has that second harbinger picked up and we'll take a look at the totals from the early reclaim missions in just a second you can see team two slightly ahead there 5.9k and climbing as opposed to the 4.8k and climbing there from team one most the red catching up quickly though with that acu scooping that hard read though on route does have a selen there so he's got vision on what's going on of course we've also got a mole in place there for moses as well reed just about to gain vision on 
his mirrors ACU. We're going to get a little bit of com on com action potentially. No, Moses doesn't like to look at that. He says, I've scooped the two hubs. I'm going to back up and work on some of these. He's going to let that loyalist wreck go over to Reed. Focus on the uh, rest of these blaze wrecks over here. But the cannons finally open up. A little bit of an exchange of fire. Plenty of HP remaining on the two ACUs. And uh, curiously, Bart's not decided to try and hold on to the aperture there. He's uh, instead falling back a little bit with his ACU. Going to work on these mass extractors down here. And that's going to yield all of those blaze wrecks to sky out who's going about harvesting those with his ACU as we speak. Couple more mech marines making their way around the edge of the map with a snoop to boot. So while Bartimus is going to come forward with his ACU there, could be potentially opening up an avenue for attack on that mass extractor he has just completed. The obligatory radar installations going down at the central reservation. You can see there for both teams, pretty standard with the meta there. Mech Marines get a solution on that mass extractor. Nothing in range for Team 2 to prevent that from going down. So that'll be another two mass down there per tick for Bart. A couple of wrecks still remain. Sky Out didn't manage to polish them all off. And of course, don't forget, we've got these large boulders as well and uh, the associated rocks around them. It's quite a lot of extra reclaim as well. And you can see that 14k apiece for the two teams. So neither team really getting ahead in total reclaim figures. It's such a handy little tool, this. You've got to like it. But a nice little T1 push coming through the top aperture there from Reed. A few Zooies and a couple of Thams as well. Going to take down those two little mass extractors from Moses, who's backed up with his ACU, has a radar station further back but it looks like he is completely yielding the initiative at the reservation to his mirror we getting a land factory online and pumping out t1 spam around the edge of the central reservation that forward radar post for sky out potentially under threat now as those units head further south and look out we've got a drop coming in now from bart like a whole chariot full of fervors t1 artillery making their way in towards moses's base moses out front with his acu meanwhile trying to tidy up the t1 spam from reed manages to hold on to his mechs he'll be happy about that but the chariot is inbound there is a mobile t1 anti-air sky slammer at the back there but he doesn't manage to get too many hits on that chariot. Those fervors will make landfall and will cause a few problems by looks of things for Moses. Going to lose a couple of T1 power generators. Going to lose a T1 mechs. And we've got an energy storage there as well. Definitely a priority target if he can pick that up. Volatility of the explosion alone would take out the other four T1 P gens, but instead he's going deep straight for the T2 mass extractor, and he's going to get that. Taking Moses down to 31 generated mass per tick. Another T2 mass extractor under pressure, but I have a couple of hoplites rolling in there for Moses, and they're going to survive. <laughs> Manage to keep that mass extractor alive on 400 hit points very close indeed but there's a nice little uh, illustration there of a quick tech from team one we've also got quick tech out from sky out he's uh, got a couple of pillars on the field now one of which rolling into moses's base for added protection Taking a look at the uh, mass figures so far. So we've got 43 there for Reed, 43 there for Sky Out, 36 for Moses and Bart, who hasn't really been under any real pressure. Seems to be lagging behind on 32. You would have expected R Moses to be under the most strain after that drop. 
but uh, even with losing those early mass extractors, it hasn't hampered him too much. You'll notice as well that this is a perfectly even match in terms of ranking, global ladder ranking. A couple of 1100s versus a 1000 and a 1200. But map control sliding over to Team 2 very slightly with Reed able to capture this northern aperture. Southern aperture is contested, although Sky out in the slightly stronger position with a few fortifications in place. Bart, however, getting an upgrade on his commander as we speak. Could change the nature of things at the bottom of the map. But a nice little push here from Moses, bringing a banger with him to help deal with some of that T1 anti-air. Reed wisely gives those land forces a bit of a wide berth with his interceptors but those interceptors are going to get chopped by Team 1's air force regardless not enough units on the field for Moses to contemplate trying to push Reed off his stronghold which is uh, getting stronger all the time now. We've got a couple of T2 PDs in place, or we will have very shortly. One of them operational, the other soon to go online. Bart very close now to completing his upgrade. Sky out now with vision on it. You'll realize he's potentially missed an opportunity to force a cancel there. And he really has missed an opportunity. That is going to finish any second. Pillars for Sky overwhelmed by Bart's ground forces. And not a lot on the ground, really, for Team 1 at all. That early tech not really paying dividends. And we are now seeing T2 on the field for Reed. Ilshivers making their way to the front line. At the 11 minute mark, third T2 PD operational now for Reed, who's looking incredibly strong up there. So, Reed on 60 mass or so, Sky out on 50 something, and it normalizes after the reclaim. And then 54 for Moses and 40 for Bart. little tentative push now from Reed who's getting wailed on from the T1 bombers just launched from Moses' base. Moses with his ACU in the area. Now moving in to force Reed back. Eats a few Zooey shells on the way to avoid as many of those as possible. those as he can and now it's Bart's turn to go on the offensive and he's got a few obsidians up front with some asylums for shielding and they go straight after the lead triad there's still another one operational with another one under construction though Pillars for Sky Out advancing when they should be withdrawing, taking Oblivion turret fire. Gonna lose another one of those. And another unnecessary casualty. Can't afford to throw away T2 units like that when they've cost you so much and you have so few of them. But now, UEF, Turtle Power, somewhat coming into its own. Three triads online, a couple of T1 PDs. And Bart's position rapidly 
becoming untenable and the worst thing about that is there's a lot of mass here for Sky out to potentially grab if he's got any sense he'll continue the PD creep to oust Bart's ACU out of the area completely he doesn't seem too concerned with that at the moment Then the obligatory lull in activity as they assess their next move. Reed rolling out with his ACU. And we have T3 on the field now for Moses. Who seems to be working on a trebuchet right off the bat. Wants to try and range Reed's base if possible. No T3 on the way as yet for Sky Out. We have T2 Air for Reed. And a T3 Land Factory on the way for Reed as well. T2 Air also for Bart. And uh, still sticking with the T2 Tech for his ground game as well. But Reed encroaching on Moses' base now. Taking Trebuchet Fire as he goes and there's a line of hoplites that could cause him a few problems when he gets into range but we have no PD to speak of in the area Reed wanting to inflict as much damage early on as possible but we do have bricks on the construction as we speak 89% done and climbing first one going to roll off the conveyor belt any second now but the Ilshivers steaming into the base. There's the brick that's going to add a lot of extra damage into the mix. Reed wants to overcharge it ASAP, which he does. So it takes that out of commission. Lots of Ilshivers now breaching the front line. If they can get in the back and take down some of these mexes, they stand a good chance of crippling Moses in the mid game but there just aren't that many of them left. Moses now chasing them down with his ACU. A T1 bomber picks up a couple of Ilshiver kills there, I believe. And now Reed finds himself hung up on a wave of pillars that have been brought in by Sky out. He's bringing in some more reinforcements to assist, but Reed now down into the yellow with 11,000 hit points and falling. The last Ilshivers in Moses' base have been destroyed, so no more pressure can be brought in there. The Ilshivers now have arrived to assist Reed's ACU. But Reed still getting pummeled from the skies by some T1 pressure there from Moses. The Ilshiva manages to dispatch them, however. And Reed looks like he's going to get out of. Well, it could have been a hairy situation with a good 11.5k remaining. Meanwhile, the fight for the Southern Aperture continues. Bart has taken a kicking. It's down to 4.5k. Sky out looking pretty healthy on 13.5. And, and he's got a very chunky looking base for him to withdraw to should he find himself in trouble. One of the lead triads actually in range of Bart's ACU there. So he's wisely going to nudge it further to the east. And once again, we Turn to calm as our Joes assess what their next move should be. Nice Selene parked right up there against the cliff face there for Reed. Giving him some pretty good intel of what's going on around that cliff face. Going back to Eco, 90 mass per tick there for Moses. 72 for Sky Out, his partner, compares to 75 for Reed and 50 for Bart. So Team 1, despite having a lot of pressure thrown at them, ahead on generated eco slightly. 
and uh, also ahead on reclaim 107 to 98 K so a good few bricks worth of mass in there one or two, I forget what it is. Flapjack's now causing headaches for Bart, who switches up to Volcano Construction. Getting a TMD online to try and hold on to this position. Looks like it's getting harder all the time. It has a couple of Oblivion turrets that fend off this next wave with. Oblivion turrets, of course, excellent point defense, especially for large, clumped forces because of the AOE. Why is Bart not turning to overcharge there? Might have something to do with the fact that he doesn't have energy storage, which is kind of astonishing, being as we are knocking on the door of 20 minutes now gone in this game. A couple of overcharges there would dramatically shorten the amount of time he was under pressure. Still just one brick on the front line. Still have bricks under construction, but seeing a whole lot of them amassing in any great number. And we do have T3 on the field now for Reed as well. And Otham's steaming towards the front line, so... We will have parity at least in the top half of the map in terms of tech. Shields blinking on and off as they're destroyed and then rebuilt down here. The southern aperture. Outside the range of those Oblivion turrets, however, Bart seems to have no way to inflict any harm on his opponent. We at least have these mobile missile launchers causing problems. And now a Ravager from Sky Out, which is well in range of this forward position, and immediately takes down the Volcano, allowing all of those mobile missile launchers to connect with their targets, going straight after that most northerly of Oblivion turrets, Bart moving out with his ACU is withdrawing to the center of his base. We've got one, or we had one, Mercy sitting on a guided missile, but that gets spotted and popped by one of Moses' interceptors, of which there are many, landed in a precarious place in the center there. Bart sending a lot of troops around the top to assist Reed. Feels that that southern aperture is too well defended for him to do much about. Stands a better chance of harassment punching his way through the top with his teammates. Now we're going to get a little bit of uh, mobile artillery fire exchange. One Southerners down here at the bottom, although that's now taking mobile missile fire. Gets a couple of shells away on Skyout's base, but uh, promptly gets taken down by the horde of flapjacks that stroll into re range only to withdraw under pressure from Bart's forces. Another Southerners inbound, however. Moses working on some power in his main base. Already got three T2 P-Gens online for Sky Out. Would you look at the commitment to the T1 P-Gen, though, for Moses? That's quite impressive. Rebouchet for Moses continues to soften up Reed. Reed strolls out with his ACU, trying to snag a brick or two, no doubt, with an overcharge, but Moses recognizes the threat and withdraws to safety. And 
now we have the leapfrog action in place. Sky out moving forward with his ACU, getting another shield gen online and going straight for a second, or well, in fact, third, excuse me, Ravager. And a spy plane out for Moses as well. Just making a pass over Team 2's base. So he has transitioned to T3 air. And uh, is ahead of Team 2 in that respect. Neither player for Team 2 has any Tech 3 airs yet. T3 land finally on the way for Bart. We already have it in place for Sky Out. And a Whaler out for Moses. Doesn't get much done though, thanks to the Cinefer, the static flak for Seraphim. Safely under shield coverage down here. Definitely too much for one lowly T3 gunship to deal with. And there's nothing Bart can do in the south now. He's had to withdraw all the way back here. He's getting another upgrade on his commander. Asking his teammate if he should go for Percy's or Titans. Well, this stage in the game, one or two Titans maybe, but uh, Percy's all the way from here on out, really. Still not a large number of forces on the field for Team One. It's uh, really been a case of hold your position and eco eco and tech up but we do have a couple of demolishers in fact three demolishers in range now park themselves just the other side of the cliff face and harassing Bart's base Bart rolling in with his T1 and T2 from the center Sky Out trying to counter to keep those demolishers alive fortunately for Sky Out these forces now strolling into range of those Ravagers, that huge range of 90-something. Shredding that shield coverage of the Asylums, but will it be enough? Shields depleting the parashields going down now. Well, one of the demolishers is down, another two badly wounded, and couple of shots from the obsidian tanks and they're not going to make it out of there so that's a nice grab from Bart didn't really lose too much in his main base there a little bit of build capacity perhaps but nothing that's going to hurt him long term this could be nasty however some more suddenness in play for Reed takes down a T2 mechs up front from Moses Moses getting another upgrade on his commander it doesn't have a lot he can hit back with right now. We've already got personal stealth on board and T3. Tech. So it's a chunky commander for a Cybran. But whatever he's going to do, he needs to do it quickly. Indeed, calling out for assistance from his teammate as he loses a hydrocarbon and a factory and a couple of hives as well. He dispatches his forces to move on that position, whether or not this is a proper assault or just a feint in order to encourage those southerners to move back and buy him some time. Well, it certainly worked in that respect. Reed wants to get those back into position as soon as possible. He's doing some good work with those. Certainly had Moses concerned. 
And he's now properly working on that upgrade. Had it paused for a moment. This guy out saying he can assist. Has about six Percivals in the center of the map there. Maybe seven if you include this one. That can push, but they want to be making the move together if at all possible. Reed getting some T2 PD online has two online already and a whole bunch of Othams. It's actually a nasty looking front line right now. Whatever Moses is doing. Well, you can see what he's doing. That's the microwave laser icon in the bottom right hand corner. You hover over him. So he's picked up the microwave laser upgrade pretty quickly and now I'm guessing is going for personal cloak so we have a full on Mazercom coming in and a gutsy Mazercom, none of this telly business unless uh, he's switching it out you've got to love this mod how much easier does that make life find some of the other ACUs. I don't know where they've all gone. What are you doing to me? There, there's one. Sky out just with the T3 engineering suite on board. No more of this prattling around. That's quite a handy bunch of Percivals that are buying Moses some time. He's now completed the upgrade and will be invisible to all except Omni. Does Team 2 even have spy planes yet? T3 Air Tech? Well, yes, they do, but they need to get some spy planes in play. Is there one there? Yes, there is. So the idea could potentially backfire if Team 2 can get enough firepower in one place up here at the top. And don't forget. That's an awful lot of damage that that ACU can now deal. It opens up that outrageous weapon from the front of his chest on those encroaching Othams as we speak, assisted by Bricks and Percivals. That's a very nasty-looking army from Team 1 now rolling in on Reed's forward position. Reed moving out of range with just about everything he can move. Everything else... Static will remain and be destroyed, or rather incinerated. That huge sweeping chest weapon. Big fans of the chest bump, Cybrans. That's why they uh, put the weapon on the chest there. Typical Cybran bravado. Very poor sportsmanship. Now, the final position in the aperture under threat and not really affording any opposition at all. But would you look at that? An experimental online for Reed in his main base and he Thota. So that should hopefully, from their point of view, stall this attack somewhat. Always hurts to lose a forward position like that when you've held it for so long, but it's such a standard part of the game in ISIS matches. The person who drops back spends their eco on teching up and inevitably gets a mismatch, a tech mismatch against you and can roll in and take the position. ISIS yo-yo effect, if you will. And a fat boy under construction there for Sky Out as well. And also a megalith under construction way back at base for Moses. So well and truly into the experimental phase of the game now. And uh, no doubt seeing a few blasts of plasma from the Ethota's weapons there. Moses 
continues to press on with his bricks, but has withdrawn his ACU. He doesn't want to take that head on. Thank you very much. Nowhere near enough assault bots there to threaten the Athota. Point defense creep had continued down here to that point. And you can see what kind of range it's got there. That's right up to the mouth of Team 2's base. Really restricting Bart's movements. Sky out asking Moses if he has the teleport. No, because he's a Cybran with balls. And uh, there aren't many of those. Cyber and have uh, little spikes instead. But have a megalith. That's right. That's what all the people say. You're high up in April. Shot down in May by a great big megalith. A couple of uh, gutsy Percivals from Sky Out rolling in towards Team 2's base. Going to roll headfirst into Reed's ACU with a gun upgrade on board. And also a restorer out, so a little bit of gunship play now from Bart. And a nuclear missile launcher nearly complete now for Reed. I'm wondering if that could be a, a game changer soon. But this doesn't look good. Sky out finds himself cut off from his main base if that Ethota continues to push south, which it looks like it could well do. He could be in trouble. I want to think about edging right, in fact, to drag that Ethota across as many ravages as possible. Get into range of these, he should be fine, but he hasn't decided to do that. He's just heading south. The Athot is down to around 46 and a half thousand hit points, but he has a lot of Otham support now, which is rolling in. The Megalith has been completed, as we saw by that notification just a moment ago, and is rolling in towards the center, but it's got a lot of ground to cover first. Down goes the factory, down goes the T2 P Gen. Sky Out has built himself a couple more shields down here and is hiding beneath them. The Othams, however, have continued to press on. And the Megalith is now in range of the Ithota, which is taking huge amounts of damage from those forward-mounted cannons. Trying to get out of range with 5,000 hit points or so, but the shields are down around Sky, who finds himself surrounded by Othams. He needs to start overcharging. He finally does have access to that, but he doesn't seem to be using it. The transport comes in seconds too late. And Team 1, surprisingly, is the first to lose a member. Sky out evicted from the game at 34 and a half minutes. Very nicely indeed by Reed, trapping him at the bottom of the map with that Ethota and those Othams. The Ethota, though, is down. What a mass building up on this side of the map now. And a lot of mass, of course, for Moses to take advantage of right down here. Sky out trying to get his teammate to behave like a genocidal coward. But I have faith in Moses in the complete non-religious sense. I believe he won't do it. I've just got that feeling about him. Restora moves in to engage the Megalith and tackle him with his Feather Duster. Taking a look at Eco, it's a shame we couldn't see what Sky Out was on before he went down. So Moses on 197 per tick, and you compare that to the basically 500 that Team 2 are on now, cumulative. He's got an uphill battle for certain. Needs to get build capacity down here, pick up these mexes, get harvesting that base. Tons of mass at his disposal. And that major mass injection would be enough to allow him to take down 
a player or two if he can take advantage of it quickly. Lots of southerners now, though, moving to the central reservation for Reed. Raining a blue murder down on top of Moses' forces. And when I say raining, I mean mostly missing. One or two connecting, but on the whole, not the greatest. How are we coming with that nuke? Well, the nuke launcher is online. The nuke seems to be about 65% complete, or there or thereabouts. What have we got going on in Bart? A great deal. Still working on power. Certainly way behind the other two in that respect. Moses has built an experimental unit. I'm looking at the wrong person. Moses is over here. So a monkey lord now online for him. Sukhanus getting taken out one at a time by the megalith. Bricks rolling in to tackle the other units on the ground. Massive tech disparity up front as the Obsidians are just wiped out. Another Ebota over here taking damage from a couple of whalers, but T3 mobile anti air and some T1 static deal with that threat going to send in the Ethota to engage the Megalith. Now, he's not going to win that fight, at least not directly, but if he dies right next to it, he might be able to take it down in the subsequent Ion Storm. He's another death cannon to land. Oh, but would you look at that huge rank of veterancy at the worst possible time for Team 2, who stores a chunk of health, takes him back up to around 68,000. Ion Storm not going to touch that or anywhere near it. You've got to like the pressure that Moses is bringing to this fight and uh, still hasn't made a play for his partner's base. He needs to get on that. I think we might have had a, uh, a reclaim ghost there on the figures because we did see 495 mass generated earlier and we haven't lost any mass extractors for team 2 that's gone down to around 400 but that seems to be a more realistic but that's still pretty much almost 2 to 1 and the nuclear missile now ready to launch Strategic and in fact launch launching detect. going straight after that core group of factories. We have an SMD under construction, but that is five minutes late or so to the party. Could have done with that a while ago. However, Reed advancing on the Megalith with balls of Seraphim steel, albeit a slight frontal lobe malfunction. Very poorly <laughs> decided, but no! A silence to the rescue. Down goes the Megalith. The nuke connects and takes out half of Moses' base. But Moses now encroaching on Reed with both the chest-mounted microwave laser on the ACU and the Monkey Lord. And Reed is not going to get out of that one. He goes down at the 39 and a half minute mark. It is now one player apiece. And Bart, quite frankly behind the curve team one just went favorite to win this game and that's with the new connecting and taking out all of the core production facilities not going after the main resourcing options though we've got a lot of power online still all of the core mass online they have however managed to stem the tide of bricks that will be heading east Colossus now trying to chase down that Monkey Lord. Hoovering up the T3 bots as they stroll into range with that gravity weapon on the arms there. And 
annoyingly for Bart, Monkey Lord Laser has an obsession with headshots going over the top of the shields and opens up on Moses' comm as the Monkey Lord goes down. I cannot believe it. The guts on this guy. So in Omni range, the personal cloak doing nothing any more to shield Moses from being targeted. All or nothing. You've got to love that. 14 thousand hit points still on that commander out of the 48,000 literally is like another monkey lord only one that you can't see at all unless you have Omni and there it is he takes down that Omni he's laughing unless he's got spy planes in the air of course they'll be shot down instantly by the horde of ASFs hovering above. Moses though taking fire now down to around 8,000 hit points wants to inflict maximum damage knows he's lost a chunk of his production. Reed telling his partner to get out there and overcharge him. Bart's going to oblige and bring out his ACU from the far corner where he was hiding and working on another GC that's still got another 40,000 hit points to completion so not going to be built in time to stop Moses from wrecking his base. Moses on around 6,600 hit points. A couple of bricks coming in now as well. Needs to overcharge those and the commander. But the laser is focused in on him. Why isn't he overcharging? Well, maybe it's because he can't see him. The Omni has gone down. Oh, my God. Moses on around 3,000 hit points. Bart on around 800. And a couple more bricks being brought in as well. I believe it. No. <laughs> Moses snags the win in epic fashion what a way to kick off 2016 i love it moses survives when a cat could have sneezed on him and he would have gone critical well i don't often admire cyber and players but moses i take my hat off to you you uh you ramboed that commander the way it was meant to be played none of this telly business and uh, you single-handedly obliterated Team 2. Well, single-handedly. That's that's being hard on Sky. He played a very solid game. Pushed his opponent down in the Southern Aperture. But well played to both teams. Very entertaining. And I dare any of you pros out there to tell me that was a dull game. Because it was average Joes. Quite frankly, that was awesome. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. I certainly did. More to come from me in the future, as always. But in the meantime, stay well and stay safe. This is Guile, signing out.